All right. Well, I'm learning a little bit how to draw. Not really, but we're getting there. Okay, I better be specific here because I know you're not going to be able to tell what this is if I don't say. Here's the game. Astronaut catch. We have three astronauts and they're out in space. They're just floating around. They have absolutely no gravity affecting them in any way, shape, or form. And they are going to uh, play a game of catch. So Bobby is holding on to Cal and he's going to throw Cal towards Ricky. Then Ricky is going to catch Cal and he's going to throw Cal back to Bobby. And the question is, how many times can they throw Cal? So we know they can, that Bobby can throw Cal at least once because that's the action he takes the very first. And what we're going to do is we're going to use momentum to answer this question. Uh, it, it'll be a lot less money than actually taking three people out into space and uh, sacrificing them. So we know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity and it only makes sense we use the letter P to stand for momentum okay and we are going to analyze the different velocities now what we know about this problem is that Ricky and Bobby are both able to throw Cal with a velocity of one meter per second so every time they throw Cal they're able to throw him, move him away from them initially at one meter per second. Now because we're in outer space we know he's going to continue at that velocity until he reaches the other astronaut, until he or uh, gets hit by a meteor or gets pulled into a gravitational field of another planet. Uh, okay, so we're going to start out here and we're going to consider the before and the after. Well, before the pre-collision, if you want to say, or the before the collision, we're going to add up the momentum. So we have the mass of Cal and the velocity of Cal. We have the mass of Bobby and the velocity of Bobby. And that's going to be equal to the mass and velocity of them afterwards. Mass of Cal, velocity Cal, plus the mass of Bobby, the velocity of Bobby. Now we need to differentiate the uh, velocity of Cal before and the velocity of Cal after. So before, I'm just going to put an I for initial under both of the velocities. And finally, I'm going to put an F for the final velocity. And that's just before and after this very first throw. And we can label that throw number one. Now, uh, there was another given. Did you see that? Did you see that catch? I actually caught that pen in midair. That was pretty cool. Uh, so they're able to throw Cal with a velocity of one meter per second. The other thing that I didn't, I forgot to tell you about this problem is that the mass of Ricky is equal to the mass of Cal is equal to the mass of Bobby. And in the original problem, it says that their weights are the same on the moon. Well, you know if if the weights of objects are the same on any given, on any one planet or moon or any large mass of body, uh, you know that their weights also have to be the same because weight is equal to mass times acceleration. I am losing my voice. This is really fun. It's a Saturday. I usually lose my voice every Friday and it kind of goes into Saturday. I'll be better by tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, acknowledge that all the masses are the same. So really we don't even need these different subscripts differentiating their two masses because all of those masses are the same. I don't even need to know their masses because if I divide both sides by mass, I divide each term by mass and I'll see that the velocity of Cal before plus the velocity of, <laughs> the velocity of Bobby before <clears throat> is equal to the velocity of Cal afterwards plus the velocity of Bobby afterwards. And now I'm going to plug in what I know. I know in the beginning, right before the throw, their velocities are zero. So the whole left side of that equation is going to be zero. On the right-hand side, I have the velocity of Cal uh, 
because I know Bobby's able to throw him at one meter per second, the velocity of Cal after the throw is one meter per second, but what is that velocity of Bobby afterwards? Well, um, oh, and let me be specific here. If we do, I, I always forget to do this. Don't forget, you have to acknowledge what your axis is. We're going to say to the right is positive, to the left is negative. So the velocity of Cal afterwards is going to be negative because he's going to the left. Because he's going in this direction, that is negative. So now we're just going to solve for the velocity of Bobby afterwards. So Bobby's velocity after throw one is one meter per second. Now I'm just going to make a little bit more room here for us to work. Okay, so now this is the situation. We now have Ricky who's waiting for Cat to catch Cal. Bobby is going to the right one meter per second and Cal is going in towards Ricky at one meter per second. So now we're going to be looking at before throw, or I should say before catch number one. So this is before catch number one. We have um, right before catch number one, before we have the mass of Ricky, times the velocity of Ricky initially plus the mass of Cal times the velocity of Cal initially. And after the catch, Ricky and Cal are one object. And their mass is going to be the mass of Ricky plus the mass of Cal times their combined, their, their shared velocity because one is in the other's hands. Well, again, their masses are the same. So because their masses are the same, we know that m plus m is just going to be 2m final velocity. And here, uh, here we know that, oh, I guess I could get rid of this term. The, ma the velocity of Ricky initially is zero, so that term drops out. I'm going to plug in the initial velocity of Cal is negative 1, and that's going to be times the mass. We can divide both the left and the right side by mass, leaving us with negative 1 equals 2, the final velocity of them together. Divide both sides by 2. Now we know that the final velocity of them combined is negative 1 half. So let's sketch that situation. Okay, so now I, Ricky and Cal are both moving this way at negative one half meter per second. Bobby is moving this way at one meter per second. Now let's talk about throw number two. Don't forget poor little Bobby is out in space. He's still traveling at one meter per second in this direction. Ricky and Cal are together moving backwards at negative 0 0.5 meters per second. Oops, that's Cal on this side, Ricky on this side. Ricky is going to push Cal relative to himself at one meter per second. So Cal is going to be pushed at one meter per second. However, that is relative to Ricky. And combined together, they're still moving backwards at negative 0.5 meters per second. So in order to find out what Cal's resultant velocity is going to be, we have to add these two vectors together to find out what his velocity is going to be relative to a point in space. So one meter per second plus a negative 0.5 meters per second. Guess what? When Cal is released after throw two, Cal is going to be moving. Okay, we have uh, Cal is going to be moving positive 0.5 meters per second to the right because he was moving negative negative 0.5 meters per second backwards. He was thrown at one meter per second relative to Ricky. One meter per second plus a negative 0.5 is positive 0.5 meters per second. We don't even need to figure out what Ricky's velocity is.
because look check, look at this situation Bobby is going forward one meter per second Cal is going forward at 0.5 meters per second he's never going to catch up I know it's really sad only two throws can happen they're all lost in space sorry for the sad ending do the best you can to make it a great day anyway